everybody, this is Luke from Rocked. He's here to uh, assist us tonight because uh, Tara is out in Colorado looking yeah. for a, a new place to live because they're moving out there. Uh, I love Colorado, so if that's what she's going to do for I think she's going to dig it. Rocky Mountain High, yo. Oh, there'll be plenty of that. <laughs> Just drive it in, you can tell. Oh, boy. Um, Hope she likes cold in the winter. That's okay. I, I miss cold. Anyway. I do, too. I miss. I get winter now back in St. Louis, but still, it's not the same as mountain cold. Uh, I miss Midwest cold. Midwest cold's a special kind of thing. All right. That's what I get. Well, um, this was nice, wholesome discussion I've had with you, Nash. I never get this. I get garbage and trash. Yeah, yeah, what's the response to that? My response to that is, oh dear. You More picked, garbage and trash. You picked the wrong night, son. Oh, see what I get for helping out and trying to fill in on the long, fill in on the spot. You picked oh. the wrong night. All right, let's get the intro rolling. Each week... Catherine, Radio Dead Air, let's go out in the worldwide interwebs. Oh, loud. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. A section we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Where's the intro? Where is it? All right, there it is. Um, I don't want to take responsibility for this. Oh, gosh. Why are you building it up like that? Because my entire audience. I, I can't even count how many people sent this to me. Okay. Emails, Twitter, everywhere. Everyone, everyone sent this to me. So I want to take no responsibility for it because there's just there was just no way to ignore it. Okay. It was a thing that happened. All right, let me I'm going to send it to you on Twitter. Got it. I got Twitter open. All right. Uh the links you send me. <sighs> oh, what did you send me to my inbox, you creep? <laughs> Well, uh, Dash, why would you? This is quite this? literally read it and weep. Uh, this is just. Uh, <sighs> Dash, if a stranger would have sent me this, I would have blacklisted them and blocked them so hard. <laughs> I never thought I would have to say these words as part of a way I make my living. And yet, here we are. <laughs> Massive semen explosion. After Blaze hits Bull artificial insemination facility, firefighters forced to jog to dodge projectiles. I'm, I quit. That's my day off after that. I'm done. A huge fire at a cattle breeding facility in Australia has caused thousands of dollars in damage after at least 100 cylinders containing bull semen were destroyed. Emergency services were caused the blaze at the early hours at uh, Yarm Herd Services. Uh, according to ABC, it took 10 fire crews more than two hours to fully extinguish the fire. That um, is a blaze. County Fire Authority Commander Chris uh, Lotion Cole. Oh, wow. I actually said that. Um, said the crew had to be wary of projectiles coming at them as the tackle of the blaze. The liquid inside the cylinders was rapidly expanding. Uh, rapidly expanding. And essentially, uh, the lids of the cryogenic cylinders were just popping off, and the projectiles were being thrown from the building. So the projectiles were um, the canisters or the vials, and the lids were popped off of them? Yes. So the contents were also... <sighs> Projecting at the firefighters. Up from the ground came a bubbling crude. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies. What kind of sick remake are you making, sir? Jizz, that is. <laughs> oh, Bull semen. White gold. <laughs> oh, you are grounded. I guess this is one of those. You, you join the fire department because you want to save lives. You'd really do you. Your heart's in the right place, and you, this is oh, you know that was some rookie's first day. <laughs> no, it was Billy, the nineteen-year-old, on his first day, finally suiting up on the back of the truck, and this is what he has to do. 
And you know all the veteran firefighters made him do the brunt of the cleanup. Ugh. Also, <laughs> Australia, right? Yep. So you have the most dangerous wildlife in the world, yep. excruciating heat, and now projectile semen? Yep. Well, no, why would people ever go there? I don't care how nice the beaches are. But it's, a, it's a complete war zone over there now. DMZ it and never go there again. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Not even for a layover at the airport. You know even that would be bad. <sighs> Oh my god. I just have this vision of one one firefighter coming out, drippings with goo, saying, I'm too old for this shit. Just just done. <laughs> just fucking uh, done. Oh, would that be his phrase and not just ah! no matter how old and grizzled that firefighter is? Careers ended that night is yeah. all I'm saying. Uh, how are you how are you gonna market like to get new hire firefighters to sign up the following year? You know, like how, what's the campaign to get more people to sign up after this? Because you can't tell them, well, this will never happen when it does. I was there for the great semen explosion of 019. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All these poor following blaze. Yeah, they showed the farm and oh man, they took a picture of the burned down barn. I sure hope that was after the cleanup. Sure, they have a picture. Just in case you don't know what a, what a cow is, there are pictures of cows. Um, of all the things they could have taken pictures of at that scene, yeah. that's fine. Let's come on back to uh, where is this? Oh, uh, Nash, you're, Nash, you're gonna give me nightmares. I, I don't want to dream about this. Ugh. Uh, let's go to this is uh Canada. So um. This is, I, I, I don't. Somebody wasn't raised right. Where, where, where? Who, who raised you? That, that's what I have to say. The first thing about this next story. Who raised you? Man who tried to fight grizzly bear, fined four thousand dollars. Oh wait. Oh, I don't feel bad for this guy. <laughs> no. Not one bit. Nope. Idiots. It's not every day a man tries to fight a grizzly bear, but it, that's what it appears happened in Banff National Park in 2015 when Devin Mitzwing, 35, got out of his truck shirtless <laughs> and began sh shouting at the young grizzly while in a boxing, boxing stance, stance before charging at it. Pause up, punk. Come on now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Caught on camera by a number of uh, by a couple of nearby <sighs> photographers who were taking pictures of the lone grazing grizzly. Mitzwing was later uh, located in uh, Radium, British Columbia, by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and a park warden. It was charged under the National Park Acts for disturbing wildlife in a national park. Yeah, look at this idiot. Look there's at him. Lot, just this first picture. There's a lot to take in. That doesn't even, maybe it's just the perspective, that doesn't even look like a full-grown grown bear. It looks like a bear cub, kind of. It's still a bear! It's still a bear, I agree, but I'm just saying, why would you do that in the first place? Uh, there's so much going on. Why, why would you, why would you, why in God's name, it's not a kitty, it's not a puppy. <laughs> why would you want to box a bear? Fight me! <laughs> I'll right, take it off my shirt, and that is our side of conduct in Canada. We must fight to the death. You have insulted my honor. It's a fucking bear. It's a bear. It literally, it's literally the middle of the woods, too. It said it was just grazing. Yeah. It just, this it, was not a defense thing. Leave the bear alone. Also, in that picture, that top picture, the guy in the blue shirt behind uh, the boxer, what's he doing? <laughs> I, I'm probably thinking, uh... Oh, this is my ride home. I gotta, <laughs> man, I gotta get him in. I can't tell him no. Man. It's my ride home. Man. <laughs> Which is Jesus H. Christ. All right. Did, well, did, I, you, I, you know, go I'm gonna go find ahead. a picture. I'm gonna find a picture of, of bear claws. Like, not like the pastry, oh, but... Like the size of frying pans and how big they are? No. Uh, I, I want to see an actual... 
I just clicked on the second picture, a close up of the guy in his karate stance. Okay, yeah, here's a here's a um. Oh, and this has this has perspective on it. Okay. Uh. Let me get I'll this. see it on that. I have like the video on there too. I'll see it on that. Yeah, the picture over here. Um, okay. Make it smaller so everybody can see. But yeah, there's 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 for perspective. That's the size. A bear claw is the size of your entire finger. Yeah. The claw, not the paw. Not the, the paw. The claw. The claw. The size, and that's that's what he wanted to fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? What was okay? Be honest. Drunk behavior. I remember my first beer too. Did it go this well in the woods in Canada and fighting a bear? No. Yeah, I was gonna say you're still doing this show, so obviously no, that's not what happened. Uh, I, you know, I'm calling drunk behaviors because of that second picture. He's trying to do a karate stance, shirtless in the woods, trying to fight a bear. But at the same time, what what could have possibly been his end game with this? Also, what wanna, was the result? I also want to point out um, that he did not show up for court. So he has got until October 16th to pay the $4,000 fine, or he goes to jail. The for jail? Certain, yeah. Because he didn't... Sh why did he... You idiot! Everything you do is stupid. Yeah. Good luck getting in there now. I... Ugh, Mounties gonna have to hunt him down. Just dress up one of the Mounties in a bear suit, and this guy will try to come fight him, and you <laughs> surprise him that. It's just a sting operation. <laughs> what is the purpose? What did you get out of this? What could you have possibly saw as an end result where you come out on top and happy? What could it have been? I don't know. There has to be some logical explanation. No, there doesn't. To, there I'm, has to. No, this is the thing you and I disagree with. There has to be a reason for something in the back of his head why this should have been a good thing for him to do. Not saying he's sane. I'm just saying there must have been a reason in his logic process. Oh, poor bear. All right, our next one is... All right, look, I'm not a theologian. I have no, no background in religious studies. So I'm not sure I'm the best person to comment on this. However, I do believe... Um, you're doing Amish wrong. Cool. Amish buggy stopped with two men drinking spiked iced tea with a case of beer on the roof. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. <laughs> North Bloomfield, Ohio, in Trumbull County's uh, Amish country, the problems are often the same as the rest of the world. They just look different. Authorities are trying to find two men who took off running when they were pulled over for drinking and driving in a buggy. The sheriff's department deputy was on patrol. He spotted two Amish men drinking spiked iced tea. On top of the buggy was a 12-pack of beer. And one more thing. The buggy was tricked out with a stereo system and large speakers. <laughs> yes. It's oh. been spending most of our lives living in an Amish, an Amish paradise. Churn butter once a... Shut oh, the... They were play you think they were playing that song, too, out of the speaker system while they were drinking? Possibly. <laughs> might as well. Although, I, I might point out, I probably just wrecked my, my uh, monetization because I dared <laughs> the audacity to sing a bar of that song. Oh, you mean after all the different innuendos you made after the bull semen story? <laughs> this is what you're worried about for demonetization? Technically, yeah. Sometimes they don't give a shit about what the fuck you say. Man, but oh god, a, don't agree. step on the copyright, motherfuckers. You're right. It is a crapshoot. I agree. Who knows what's going to get caught? Oh, man. I have a lot of questions. Have, I've driven through Amish country several times. Um, I didn't see any tricked out uh, Sony speakers and subs blasted out any music, and I, I gotta, certainly didn't see a pack of beer on top of a buggy. I want I want to skip ahead. There are pictures. Look at this. Okay. There, it's in the video, but there are pictures from inside 
Th there's the beer on top of the roof. Jeez. Um, so it had to have been there for quite a while if the photographer was able to snag it from that point, and yeah. especially if they were riding. Look and at this. this was, and this was do you? This was whoa. Those are not standard. Those aren't even standard cups you put in your car. No. These are like this is work done on your system on your buggy. They tricked it out. Pimp my buggy, not pimp my ride. Pimp my buggy. I know, right? Look, look at that shit. What? No, that's... that's <laughs> and not only really? that, the speakers were right behind the, the where they were sitting. So they were getting blasted right in their head. So they were feeling the beat while they were drunk on iced tea. Pimp thine buggy. Yeah, Pimp that's... Pimp thine that's buggy. Yes. <laughs> I'm just... I, I love that the fact they got out and ran. It was like, cheese it, Zebediah, oh. the fuzz! <laughs> Ezekiel, grab the 12 back! <laughs> <laughs> oh. So they were drunk. It was a DUI pull, right? Uh huh. The cop couldn't chase down two drunk Amish men in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> what? They what? they did get away. There's still there are two drunk Amish men, They're, and the are cops are like Amish at this point. Yeah. The cops are like, please come get your horse. Aww, that poor horse! They left the horse in the buggy behind, and the cops were like, please, come get your horse. That horse is probably like, thank God. Fun yeah, that's me. the last line of the story. I encourage him to come forward and get their buggy and horse. That's how they learn. Good job for you. And to get on that note, man, I feel bad for the horse in that situation. You know he has seen some stuff with those fake Amish people. That's not, uh, like, that's shunning worth for the community, right? If you, especially, like, not only just police involvement but that yeah probably i didn't know there were like diet amish people <laughs> not li like just kind of pick and choosing everything what they live by we live by the psalms and proverbs but also we want a good bump in our ride down the gravel roads <laughs> what all right our, our next one is i i don't know how familiar are you with uh with with D, &D humor decently I mean, I do. So, I've done a lot of like tabletop RPG and stuff like that, so I'm familiar with D and D. If I say the word gazebo, what comes to mind? Oh, I wouldn't know that. Gazebo to me just means like the outside furniture. Okay. Once upon a time, there there's a, a, a po potentially apocryphal tale in the okay. depths of the internet about a D and D uh, campaign. The dungeon master is describing a scene, and he tells to he tells his his party. Uh, that um, they come into a clearing and they find a gazebo. Okay. And they and his players try to attack the gazebo. They ask, "What's the gazebo doing? Um, is the gazebo attacking? Is it becomes very apparent they don't understand what a gazebo what a gazebo is? is. Yeah. And it, it's 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 a bit it's 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 a, it's a thing. It's become a thing in in okay. in D and D land. You, you say I attack the gazebo. Um, plus two damage to the step. <laughs> and they get more and more frustrated as as they keep trying to to attack the gazebo. They do how much damage we did we do? None. It's a gazebo. Yeah, it's gazebo. So they keep upping the ante. Well, um. <laughs> It it gets this is sort of one of those um life imitating uh stupidity. Um actually stupidity imitating stupidity. Stupidity section, okay. Warwick man attacks gazebo with samurai sword. Well um way to impress your girlfriend. Warwick man was charged with vandalism, disorderly conduct, and having a prohibited weapon after police said he attacked a gazebo. City Park, this is Rhode Island, with a samurai sword. Andrew Witch, 37, was arrested just before noon Monday at the park, where officers said he was striking two posts of the gazebo with the sword. Police also arrested Jessica Cole, 40, uh, or disorderly conduct and having a prohibited weapon, which they said was a police-style baton. Jeez. Police were initially dispatched in a call of two people sword fighting in the park. Why were you? What did it's, that? It's Monday morning. In the middle. Of, what do you do? It's a gazebo. 
It's a beautiful day. I think I'll go out and uh, try to attack the gazebo. Yeah. Man, that mugshot, too. Yeah, that's right. I did it. The, they had it coming. The hell are you doing? <laughs> All right, Monday, 9 a.m. Yup, we got a long morning ahead of us. Ugh. <laughs> See, this breaks my point about the logic I tried to make with you earlier, how there's always some logical explanation. There has to be something in the back of mind. This one, I don't know. Oh, really? I, it, it gets worse. I got another one for you. Okay. This is from Manchester. Um, from the department of I dare you to make less sense. Manchester Airport. Controlled explosion after travel chaos sparked by naked man. I mean, controlled explosions <laughs> uh, and naked man are not the two terms I want phrased in my article, but... Police in Manchester have responded to reports of a suspicious pass package at Manchester Airport's train station, with bomb disposal officers carrying out a controlled explosion after an incident apparently triggered by a naked man running amok. How many times in your journalistic career do you get to write the term... A naked man running amok. Also, in your journalistic career, look at the phrases. Suspicious package, <laughs> naked man, controlled explosion. This guy's hit the, like the bingo of phrases he gets to check off. Unconfirmed reports suggest the incident may have been triggered by a naked man running around the coach station next to the airport. Uh -huh. Manchester police spokesman said a man had been uh, detailed at the scene adding that a controlled explosion had been carried out. A subsequent statement said, majority of road closures put in place as uh, inquiries were carried out by officers. Um, a small scene remains in place. Uh, hopefully, just... So this guy pulled out, This was not just the airport. This, like, could, like, closed off streets and stuff. The guy was running around, waving his air, arms in the air, going up and down. Um, there he is. There's our fella right there. Oh. Of all the things to be known for. He had no clothing on whatsoever. It's not what you expect to see at 6, 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. Right? Especially at the airport where you do not want to be there first thing of the morning. Man, that guy is really living his life, though. He is ecstatic. <laughs> well, nobody, nobody ever. All right. I don't. There is no one on Earth unless they have a serious cognitive disability. No one on Earth goes... Oh, yay, I get to go to the airport today. Yep, never. that's impossible at this point. It just does not happen. Even pilots who love their job don't do that. Yeah. I... <laughs> also, does the naked man have shoes on? He does. He appears to still have his shoes on. This was a plan. Like, he was ready to go. What plan? <laughs> hey, I, I don't have all the answers for you, sir. I'm just trying to point things out that must lead to something, because this was not just a spur of the moment, or he lost all his clothes in a strong wind gust or something. Now, I want to understand why, where we went from naked dude to controlled explosion. Yeah, that's, that's where, where the Yeah, there's a big gap in this puzzle, in this puzzle, and I want to know what the point was. What also, did... ugh, also, have you ever uploaded naked photos of yourself online? No. No, but they're on there. <laughs> oh, they're... It was like a mass exodus. All hell has broken loose. Some of the air cabin crew that parked there have been turned away. I, you I shut down an airport. I want to just the, the, this, this. This does not seem like a fun time to me. This does not seem like a productive use of my limited finite expanse here on this spinning ball of mud to run around an airport. I know you've had terrible flight delays. Yeah. How upset would you be if you found out the reason your flight was delayed was because a naked man was running around? Would you want that man's head on a platter? Oh, yes. I would. Lock him up and never let him see the light of day again. Also, Luke, this is kind of hilarious. The perspective, i am just noticing the perspective on your video. It makes you look like you're sitting next to a gigantic microphone. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a two-liter bottle sucks. It's like it looks like the microphone is as big as oh no, it was a we were it was a fooled we were fooled we were tricked <laughs> deception. What three dimensional insanity are you weaving over there? This last one tonight, 
Okay, before you get going, Dom just messaged me saying, my sister is concerned the naked man is going to delay her flight tomorrow. Because they're flying back to the UK. Good luck with that. Hi, Dom's sister. <laughs> Dom and his siblings are watching right now. Actually, they're more likely to be delayed by the fact that an entire airline in the UK just went bankrupt instantly. Yeah, I heard about gone. that, too. They're it's having... Like, wow. Yeah, it's like Wow Air for like that Icelandic airline. It's just like, gone. Yeah, they're having to... There's this massive government operation to try and get all these people back home. It's a nightmare. Ugh. Final and then you have this naked guy making it worse. Sorry. Ugh. Final story this week. There's an old saying. Um, sometimes you eat the bar, sometimes the bar eats you. Well, I, I, I'm not quite sure how it fits into this, this, this headline. But there's got to be something we can do with it. Woman bites camel's testicles after it sits on her. <laughs> oh, mom. And it's appropriately enough, it's from Gross Tet, Louisiana. Okay. Strange encounter with a camel led an unidentified woman to bite the exotic animal's testicles after it sat on her. Um, strange encounter is churching it up quite significantly. You have far passed that. Caspar the camel lives at Tiger Truck Stop. <laughs> Man, this is a Louisiana article if I've ever seen one. Wowzers. Uh, oh. In his enclosure, it's surrounded by fencing and signs that warn visitors to stay out. The woman's husband reportedly threw dog treats inside Casper's enclosure, prompting the dog to run under the fence. <sighs> Authorities say Caspar got spooked by the intrusion and started chasing the woman when she went to the enclosure to rescue the dog. That's when the woman, that's when the camel sat on the woman, which is the nicest thing the camel could do. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse, lady. The camel's One like, back. you sit your ass down. Yeah. You are too excited. You, you behave. Throwing your dog treats all over my home. Ugh. And I want to point out that this is a quote from the woman. I bit his testicles to get him off of me. A couple were cited for criminal trespass and violation of le leash law. But even more, I want to point out, don't worry about the camel. Just to, to make the story even worse, the camel's fine because she had no teeth. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not lying to you. So she used her gums? She gummed the camel's testicles. Nah. Nah. I would like to think any one of us who are ever faced in the situation of being sat on by a camel that we would... I don't know. I don't know if, if my, my survival instincts would, would make me decide, okay, Let's chomp some nuts. I don't want to die. But on the other I, hand... I know that's... <laughs> All right, Reaper. I'm done. Let me go. I'm not getting up from this. This is how I end. What? <laughs> I bit his testicles to get him off of me. Okay. I get the reasoning. There's... <laughs> this truck stop in Louisiana is gonna go down in infamy. I just... Everybody involved is wrong except the camel and the dog. Yeah. Everybody else is so... The animal kingdom really does have it much more together than human beings at this they point. They do, right? I mean, it, the camel didn't bite her, didn't stomp no. on her. Oh, the, that's what I was saying. Like, if that camel would have kicked her, like, the head or something, or, or, like, anywhere in the body, that would have been a serious injury. So she got lucky all the camel did was sit on her. No, the camel just went over and went, no. Yeah, okay. That's enough, young lady. You yes. sit down. He was not counting. 
As you wouldn't. You wouldn't expect that to be a problem. Normally, humans don't bite camel testicles. It's not yeah. a thing they do. Nope. We're not known for it. <laughs> they don't gum. They don't gummy them. What the God. There, this is just one of those moments in life you have to just question everything. Uh, can you imagine the poor truck stop worker having to be told what just happened to their camel? The, they probably thought they were they were being punked. No, but you get out of here. Get get get, no. get your gas and go. Yeah. No, that didn't happen. You're lying. Baton Rouge, home of LSU and Casper the Camel. Oh, don't don't go near Casper though. He's had a rough weekend. <laughs> He's had a rough. And poor Campbell! Right? Because, like, I'm not clicking on that play button just for fear of there's video of this act, and I don't want that on my browser history. But, ugh, man, that is such an innocent-looking animal. Just in the middle of Louisiana. Uh, camels are are known to be kind of assholes. but They this... can be, but this is this looks domesticated and... Couple Pretty. were cited for criminal trespassing and violation of the leash law. That's the least of her problems after it gets out what she did. They don't name her in the story. Which she knows. I get, she, she knows, knows what she did. You know what? I think if you're the type of person to not only bite a camel's testicles, but to to be quoted as saying you bit, you're going to brag to somebody. Yep. You're the kind of person who's going to be, guess what I did this weekend? Someone tries to cut in front of her a line. You think I'm afraid of you? I bit Casper's testicles. Okay, this lady's crazy. Also, if you scroll down, there's one comment on this post. Okay, now we're getting to the real <coughs> news. He's not you know, lying. There, there it yeah. is. Baton Rouge has the hard-hitting headlines that we want to see. Oh, there it is. Poor down Casper. There it I'm is down sorry. there. The comment says, okay, now we're getting to the real news. Yeah, the news you can use. <laughs> is that like on the headline? I'm like, like right after a sports game, right before they go into the evening news. Tonight, Casper gummed? I want it, the, the KSAT ABC affiliate, KSAT 12, their tagline is expect more. And too, you gave too much. <laughs> I think at this point you were kind of dis prepared to be disappointed should be the tagline. <laughs> Expect more, be disappointed. So yeah, the, yeah. the first thing we learned this week is um, the, the links people will go to survive. <laughs> but they got themselves into that own situation. They did. Now. They did. Um, I only feel bad for the camel and the dog. I, that's all. We've learned that um, uh, at any given moment, suddenly naked. Yeah. Suddenly penis is standing beside you. Living in Florida for years, I, I learned that the hard way. Just suddenly naked. That, that Your entire day is ruined because someone... Oh, 245, penis. Um... We've learned it's never too early to attack an inanimate object with a sword. I did learn that. I didn't know that was something I needed to know, apparently. We've learned that you can do Amish wrong. <laughs> I did not learn that. I knew that already. You I can, think they knew that, too. You can completely fail Amish. Well, they failed hard. That, sub, that system in the back of their buggy was nice. <laughs> Dang. We've learned don't fight the bear. It's yeah. It, it, Poor wildlife really took a beating this past week and put in unfortunate circumstances. That horse from the buggy, this bear, that camel. And finally, we've learned sometimes life gives you projectiles of bull semen. No, it doesn't. This is not what life should give you. But it does, though. It, it shouldn't. I... Uh... <laughs> no, that's not like a precious moments, Hummel. Sometimes life gives you projectable semen. They have like the little character like this with little darts going by it. Yep. Oh, man. It, Poor... is, a, 
it, poor it's... little 19 year old Billy on his first day of the firefighter brigade. When, when, when you, when you were old, when you have retired, you tell your children, come here children, I'll tell you about the day the bull semen exploded. You see the barn that burned down rubble over there on 45th street. Oh, there's a tale. I'm going to tell you about that barn. <laughs> and I, I want to point out that that everybody uh, on on Twitter, the people have, have, have even Tara was like, "This is our brand now." That everybody sent us this. This is our brand. I mean, they might have well just added you when they made the story and wrote it up online. To be fair, <laughs> that that is true, and that's far more strange than uh, many of the stories even you've posted about. Yeah. And boy, is that a statement. I, to this, I say, well, well, one, I'm never going to Australia. <laughs> Add another reason to the list. Sorry, Aussies, I'm sure you're lovely people, but I don't trust anything over there anymore. And two, well, there's some jobs the firefighters shouldn't have to do. They have enough to worry about. Well, it wasn't poop. I, I asked to not have poop stories, and I paid for it. Was it technically it was not poop. I learned my. That's what I learned. Don't ask for specific stories. Stories to be excluded in Nash's show. Shit's you like a fuck. monkey's paw, man. <laughs> <laughs>